we're good for static noise. So good start. ¿Qué pasa, campeones? Welcome to the Churros y Tácticas podcast. It is Wednesday, the 11th of October, and uh, we are fashionably late, which, of course, uh, is not the first time that we uh, do this on this podcast. Those of you who have been following us know that uh, even though we try to put two episodes a week out on Monday and Thursday, that's just a mere formality, but uh, we record when we can. And uh, the reason we are late this week is um, down uh, mainly having to do with with uh, my travels. As the as you viewers might remember, last week I uh, mentioned that um, I was going away, and uh, I have come back from my travels and uh, safely, may I add, thankfully. Um, I say safely because I went to visit uh, some very good friends in Israel. I have uh, I got the opportunity to meet up with friends in, in Tel Aviv and um, of course Israel, Palestine for the most unfortunate of reasons uh, are once again making the news, making the headlines for uh, the most sad and dire of reasons as well. And um, I briefly spoke with uh, Kian before this podcast. We rarely do much prep. It's uh, very much, of course, uh, an improvised podcast where we discuss uh, the most important things of the least important things in life, and that is football. Um, but before recording, uh, we wanted to uh, just make one thing clear, and that is, you know, we are not here to judge we are not here to choose sides um but i guess this is perhaps a good occasion to uh, uh share at least from my perspective what i witnessed uh over these last few days uh because i did i was there when the war broke out on saturday and um wasn't able to leave until sunday uh which was you know those days were truly uh, just unreal. I mean, shocking, scary, and, and hugely saddening uh, and worrying, of course. Um, because quite frankly, it's it's never been a situation. I've never experienced war, my goodness. Uh, and, and I hope that none of the listeners have. Uh, and those of you that have or, or are, uh, my heart goes out to you, to all of you. Um, so where do I start, Kian? I, I left on Wednesday, last week Wednesday, so exactly a week ago. And um, I knew Tel Aviv. I'd been there before. And I know it as a, uh, a beautiful place, a wonderful place because of its people, because of its culture, its vibrance. It's very dynamic, um, you know, with all the troubles, of course. Uh, it is also a place that is very much worth visiting. And uh, I do so gladly, uh, in particular because of, uh, uh, you know, of course, the friendships that I have. But, but I mean, the, the people really make the place just uh, quite unique. Uh, you know, there, there's a phrase, a uh, phrase tossed around often, Kian, is, is carpe diem. And you really get a sense that the people there live with that kind of philosophy because, quite truthfully, you don't you know, they don't know what will happen uh, at any given moment, right? So, uh, and and that makes it unpredictable in, in the good sense of a way, uh, but also uh, as, as I got to witness firsthand um, in, in the worst sense. So uh, Wednesday, I mean, I, I just, we had a great time. Like I said, a, a wonderful time catching up uh, with Shai, his, his family, uh, friends, Yella, Tome, Roy, just, just wonderful people. And um, on the evening of Friday, we, um, we had a lovely dinner and afterwards we went out and we sort of planned it so that Friday would be, you know, kind of the, the, the final party, if you will, because uh, you know, uh, it was it was a holiday there on, on Saturday uh, and it's uh, Shabbat as well. So it was just sort of the, the perfect moment to uh, to have that be the peak of uh, of our trip. And uh, we enjoyed it. We enjoyed it to the maximum so much so that uh, Paul and I, we returned to the hotel at around uh, five o'clock in the morning. 
um, unbeknownst to us, we were woken up by um, explosions, by sirens uh, and alarms going off. And the hotel, mind you, this is like an hour and a half <laughs> into our sleep. So we didn't really wake up our freshest, if you will, or as you can imagine. Um, but um, that being said, I mean, you know, it was, it was just, it, it was so surreal, Kian, that, that situation, waking up with, again, hearing explosions, um, hearing the sirens, the alarms going off, and, and you know, the hotel uh, speaker system giving their, giving the whispers, giving all of the hotel guests instructions on, on where to go, what to do. Um, <clears throat> so naturally, of course, we followed those instructions. And um, then, you know, uh, grabbed our phones. Um, and we, we were told eventually that we could go back up to our rooms. Uh, and, you know, it was family that was reaching out. Is everything okay there? Uh, we were kind of trying to diffuse the worries, if you will, kind of diffuse the tensions, uh, because we got a sense, again, that we are complete rookies to this. So once the hotel started telling us that um, it was okay for us to go to our rooms, I, I, as a foreigner, as, as somebody that is completely out of their element, it was sort of like, oh, man, well, you know, holy shit, I can't believe we just experienced that. Um, and with without, you know, any any sort of disrespect you do you do as a as an outsider get a start thinking like well that's what the people here are used to dealing with right i mean at that point of course we were unaware of the scale of uh of those morning attacks or of the the, the attacks on of that day on saturday uh but knowing how well prepared the Israeli army normally, as I say, well prepared because obviously one of the flaws was that they were this completely caught them off guard. But it, it's no secret that uh, the army, the Israeli army, is is highly you know skilled, qualified, one of the most I mean elaborate, professional, if you will, uh, and equipped ar armies in the world. So uh, it was then later that day, around uh, nine thirty in the morning, when the the second you know, air raids started to fall. Uh, and again, it was, you know, the explosions, you, you just felt it were a little bit closer. The, 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 the bangs started to be louder. Um, at that point in time, you know, we had a balcony. From the balcony, we couldn't see anything, but you felt that the windows were shaking. Uh, again, the uh, sirens, alarms started to go off. We followed the hotel instructions. We were ushered down to the bunker. And um, once again, uh, around, it must have been like 10, 30, 11 a.m. in the morning, uh, we were allowed to go back to our rooms. And it, it was so, the weird thing, I guess, was being in a hotel with other guests. Uh, one as the day progressed and and you know we're we're, we're obviously keeping in, in touch with shy with our friend he's telling us everything that's going down we are glued to the news we're glued to our phones and you see you know the drama that is uh, developing in particular in the south of, of of israel you're thinking look i need to get out of here but but at, at no point in time um did i did i really i guess fear for my life at that point right so Thanks to Shai's dad, uh, I managed to uh, uh, book the next flight back home to Barcelona on Sunday morning, 6 a.m. Uh, you know, I have the wife calling me, my, my, my sisters, my parents, uh, friends reaching out that, that knew that I was there. And um, we're, just, we're, you know, you're, you're taking everything in, in a, in, in a situation that is completely out of your where you're completely out of your element uh, and you basically place your faith in the Israeli defense system, right? I mean, in this, the, the, the famous Iron Dome, I'm, I'm sure you've heard of as well, uh, that intercepts basically the rockets as they are, are blasted from Gaza into Israeli territory. Um, and so it was just a matter of staying in our rooms and await and, and, and waiting or really awaiting further instructions in the meantime you're seeing helicopters uh you know 
going through the skies. You're seeing the the Israeli uh, uh, secret services park outside of our hotel. Uh, you see the the police forming kind of barricades alongside of the the coastal lines. This was a hotel that was was close to the beach. We're in the south of Tel Aviv, mind you. Um, and eight o'clock in the evening hit Kian, and you know maybe it was. And again, I'll be I'll be open here. It was maybe the 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 morning like the 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 drunken stupor that we were awakened from because again we went to bed at, at five a.m. and were woken up at six a.m. Uh, that whole morning it's it, it was surreal in and of itself because you're still in this half state of sleep and drunkenness. Uh, once the evening hit, you know we are obviously like uh, fully awake at this point, fully sober. Um, Dude, like the loudness of the bang, the loudness of the explosions as 150 rockets rained down on Tel Aviv, uh, one kilometer at the time we didn't know, but Shai informed us later it was about uh, one kilometer away from the hotel that we stayed at. We could literally hear, see and feel these explosions, how the Iron Dome was intercepting these rockets that, that were heading into Tel Aviv. We were out standing outside of the, the balcony. Uh, what felt like, you know, an eternity, but, but in reality was probably a matter of seconds because, dude, the fear that I felt, uh, I've, never, I've never been so scared in my life. I've, I, I thought at that point in time, I was like, it, that's it. I'm like, this is... Knowing as well that the, the Iron Dome, I think, intercepts around, I think it's rough, roughly 90% of uh, rockets, you know, that, that 10% chance just, just, you don't want to be in the position, let's say, where you, where you have a 10% chance of, of a rocket, um, you know, breaking through that, that defensive line, that Iron Dome. And you're, you're, yeah, you fear for your life, quite literally. And, 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 and in, in that kind of life threatening situation, uh, in a war situation, you know, I had never been in, but because it was dark as well, it just became so much more real. Um, as you saw, you know, the, them like blow up the lights in the sky, the bangs, the noises, the alarms of the city, the, the sirens in the hotel as well, the instructions and, uh, yeah, it was it was then really where uh, it it was weird as well. It, it had kind of like a, a Titanic kind of feel, um, because I I didn't want to tell my wife, quite frankly, the the danger that that I was felt that I was feeling at the time, the danger I was in, and and uh, the fear that I was feeling. But but um, she, I mean, did she know? Because was she watching the news that day? She knew. She yeah, knew what was going on? Oh, hundred percent. There, yeah, hundred percent. They're glued to the news, but but the news doesn't travel that quick. That's another thing that I noticed mm -hmm. is that you know at least international news at that moment, as yeah. as it was eight o'clock, uh, and apparently this was done very strategically as well. It was like they knew that everybody was going to be sitting in front of the TV sets watching the eight o'clock news, uh, that they chose that specific moment to you know launch this this attack of one hundred and fifty missiles. Uh, and you know, we went from, from, from bunkers down the, st or, or from down the stairwells, we were waiting. I mean, it, it was at some point you couldn't go down anymore. Um, we went up and down four times, Kian, to, you know, to, to make a long story short, mm. uh, from, from, uh, sort of bunkers to the stairwells, to the safe rooms that we found, uh, were actually on the floor itself, um, up and down like four times until it stopped until it stopped and again until the hotel said okay you know dear guests you can go back to your rooms please do not leave the premises and await further instructions and uh you know that was i mean that was enough for me man like i i couldn't obviously close an, uh, an eyelid like I, I was awake for for the entirety of the night you're kind of like there's this eerie silence as well that just beset the city of Tel Aviv after that uh, third or fourth air raid. And um, I'm just counting the time, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not a religious person, but uh, I was, uh, you know, certainly clutching my hands together and just hoping that I would make it to the airport. Um, my flight was at 6am in the morning. 
and and I give thanks to the taxi driver that was brave enough to leave his family and, and take me to the airport. That you know that was one of my concerns at the airport. I mean, you know, very professional. Uh, all of the the crew there, the people working there as well, um, got us on the plane. The, the plane itself was was it was a bizarre again just everything was surreal kian it, it's it's hard to put into words when the uh, i was on such a, a lack of sleep as well but uh the feelings i was feeling it's it's i lacked the uh, vocabulary to to properly i guess express it or do justice to it but there was just this eerie silence there was tension there was silence as we were taking off uh and you didn't really feel a sigh of relief until you know we were sort of high in the air and and out of of uh you know, danger territory, uh, because in particular, I mean, in my case, I'm thinking the whole time the attack started at around 6 a.m. on on Saturday morning. What's not to say that the attacks are going to restart again, reignite at 6 a.m. on a Sunday? And I was flying Elal um, Airlines. Uh, you know, I, I'm not gonna lie. I was I was fearing for my life still on that plane as we were taking off. You know, hoping that not a, a stray rocket that would make it out of the Iron Dome was was gonna hit the the airplane. But you know, I'm I'm blessed, man. I'm I'm lucky. I'm uh, I left with with a great sense of uh, you know more than than uh, more than relief. I, I genuinely felt guilt. I felt guilty for leaving Shy, for leaving Yella, leaving their families, the the, the friends I made on that trip as well, uh, the people there suffering. Um, uh, and uh, for, yeah, just a great sense of of guilt and sadness, Kian. Uh, but also, of course, you know, very much aware of of how lucky we are to to live in in a peaceful place, man. And uh, since I've been back, it it's it's been I've been a bag of of mixed emotions, uh, in constant contact with with the people there, you know, my, and who my heart goes out to, you know, my, for that matter, I mean, my heart goes out to all of the people uh, affected and, and the innocent people uh, affected by this awful, dire and, and complex tragedy, this, this war situation that has once again broken out because, and I, I say this to, to, to shy all the time, uh, you know, I want to believe that the vast majority of the people that of us just want to live in peace. And, um, so yes, of course I stand with the innocent Israeli citizens, and of course I stand with the innocent Palestinian citizens. You know, I mean, some of my nearest and dearest friends are Jewish or Muslim. Uh, you know, I have friends from from Israel. I have friends from Lebanon, Egypt, Iran, Kian, uh, your Iranian roots. You know, so it's it's my pickle. My 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 fight is against any form of fundamentalism, you know, r religious fundamentalism, any extremist, fascists, you name it. You know, I, I, I want to believe in love. I believe in empathy. And I wish we could eradicate all that hate and, and, and anger. But um, I mean, like we said in the top of the, the podcast, dude, I don't, you know, I know I'm underqualified. I know I'm lacking in education, uh, in, in geopolitical, cultural, historical context to to embark on a discussion now so heavy and complex as this. But I will tell you that these events have, have sparked something in me where I feel more motivated and, and even desperate than ever to like to continue mm -hmm. to learn and to improve myself as a person and uh, as a citizen of the world and uh, and a lover and believer in mankind, Kian. Um, you know, I, I don't know if you listen to the Lex Friedman pod podcast much but but i certainly do and uh i believe it was him that said that life uh, how's it go this life this world of ours is too beautiful not to keep trying to improve or to to do something good and uh and that's that's the mission i'm on now you know I, it's it's i've been on an emotional roller coaster as it is since uh the beginning of the summer for uh you know for the reasons that that you know and, and the listeners know as well as this, the closing of barca tv and 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 uh, you know the the search now for the next big thing in in my life and my career path and um this this has definitely left another imprint and a big mark in in me and i i, I want to do something good for and at least like provide my little grain of salt my plant my little seed 
to try to make this a better place for our kids and, and future generations. Yeah, I mean, as uh, as the listeners know that, you know, we generally, we we obviously talk about things outside of football all the time. But when it comes to subjects as heavy as this, we 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 don't dabble into it really. And um, the reason we are today is because this was a firsthand experience that Diego had being in Tel Aviv um, on, on literally the, the, the day this was all started. I mean, obviously, there's a long history of, of what's happening here. But for this specific instance, Diego was there on the weekend. And, you know, the, we, you can't really transition this to football, nor can you talk about football in times like this. So there are definitely periods that happen all the time, unfortunately, because of the nature of everything that's happening around the earth over the course of human history. And in those moments, you know, you kind of sit and you think, well, for a living, we turn on our laptops and we talk about um, a silly game. And we love doing that, but it's an extremely privileged position. Um, You know, we can talk about some of the things we complain about, like, you know, and this happened in, in, in this game or, you know, this, this podcast had technical difficulties or this, um, you know, whatever, whatever things we might complain about when it comes to this stuff. And then you realize like, that's just such a privileged thing to even have those problems. Right. And absolutely, even just little things like me taking my kids out for a stroll in the forest um, yesterday. Uh, is an extremely privileged thing to do that I just get to do because I'm lucky enough by some pure lottery to be born in Canada and not in a war-torn country where people can't leave. I'm just extremely lucky based on a lottery in that situation, and I'm very grateful for it. But it it obviously makes it hard to... Especially when, you know, like when when one of us on the pod in, in Diego's case was actually there on the ground, um, you know, you just can't really transition that to football. And our plan was basically to. We had two options, I think we we said maybe we can just take this week off. Uh, I, I would never pressure Diego to record um, in a situation like this. Obviously, he he wanted to come on today. <clears throat> And uh, we said, look, we can we can either just say, like, hey, we're taking the week off and explain why. Or we can just hit record and, and let Diego tell his story and I'll listen and uh, we can publish that that story that Diego said. And I think we opted for the latter, obviously. And again, it's just like there are it's, it's just a self-reflection also of like we're just very lucky to do this. You guys are lucky to be able to comment on these podcasts and. And sometimes argue with each other, argue with us, whatever, or or just, you know, just love the podcast, whatever your stance on it is. But even just that ability to sit there and and comment or sit here and record and publish about a sport is an extremely privileged position. And, and we recognize that. And uh, Diego, I'm sorry you, you were going through that. And of course, um, you're also very lucky to be able to just go back home. And and yeah. just tell the story, right? There are a lot of people who are really, really suffering, and we don't need to get into reasons why. I think they're quite obvious. And yeah, I just wanted to put it out there too that like it goes without saying. Just like if you're lucky enough to be able to listen to this podcast, watch the podcast, comment on the podcast, also just maybe go and do something that you wouldn't normally do. Maybe you go and hug your loved ones. Maybe you go call your loved ones. Maybe you just go make plans to go see them. Maybe go visit them. Do whatever you can to just remember that, you know, we're on this floating rock for a short amount of time. And uh, it's supposed to be this beautiful existence or it theoretically has the potential to be. And we got to all do our part. And I'm sorry, my heart goes out to everybody who is suffering um, right now in a war-torn country and uh, my heart is with you. That's it. That's all. That's all. That's all I, want, what I wanted to say. So Diego, sorry you went through that buddy. And uh, 
you know. No, nah, man. Like you said, I mean, I, I, you know, I was fortunate to get out. Um, and yeah, my heart goes out to all these people that, that can't and that are genuinely suffering and losing loved ones. Um, yeah. And I um, hope there's better days to come. Yeah. Um, you you also are uh, you're taking another trip, right, this weekend? Yes. So while I was there in Tel Aviv, I, I uh, got a call from the guys from the beach soccer um, tournament to do, uh, if I did the Euro Cup last time, they're doing a Mundialito, It's but it's just three days. Uh, so I, I, I will be back for Monday. Okay. So at least give us some content. You barely gave us any content from your last <laughs> Portugal trip. I think it was just like one, you were on the beach for like one second. <laughs> We want well, to dude, see it man. was it was really not glamorous like <laughs> like you know the, I was not on the beach then I, I I told the story on the pod right where I was in a dark little locutorio a little booth commenting on a little screen what was taking place on this beautiful island in Italy in Sardinia uh, whereas this time I'm told or I'm of the impression I, I will be in more picturesque surroundings as I will be uh, on the beach. It's taking place in the south of Spain this time in Huelva. Mm. So uh, I, I, I will, you know, if it's content worthy, I, I will definitely do that. But me in a little booth, a little dark booth that is as big as a Ryanair toilet, I just didn't feel that glamorous enough to be bragging about it. Well, listen, man, um, you know, what's what's great about this podcast is that it's just such a roller coaster of emotions. You get you get days like this, and then literally like in two weeks, Real Madrid versus Barcelona is happening. Oh my god! And it's just gonna go back to shit show. Of right. um, <laughs> today it's uh, I don't know if it's I'm hug, ready for that. Man. Today it's hug your loved ones, shit. and then on October 29th, thirtieth, whenever we record the the post game show, it's gonna be all right. Guns out of the holsters. Up. It's gonna be. It's gonna. Get, it's gonna get ugly. All. All the. All. All the. Uh, all the commenters will be ready too. They're gonna rush to the comments with. It's like gonna be like uh, Avengers Endgame. Everyone. Everyone uh, getting ready to to join the battle. But hey, man, we still got a couple of weeks for that at least. That's um, a battle. That's that I'm. I'm. I'm willing and and ready to take on when the time comes. Big one. Big one. Um, Diego, any concluding thoughts? Spread love, man. Mm. You know, I, I like it. And I, I, I know that is idealistic. I know it sounds very pie in the sky and hippie, but I do believe in that. And uh, it's it's the reason I, I enjoy listening to Lex Friedman so much because um, it's kind of his stance as well. You know, through conversation, through empathy, um, I think love can conquer. But there's a lot of hate to eradicate. And yep. like I said, I want to make it my mission to to try to chip in and exposing it, eradicating it. I love it. I'll co-sign. Spread the love. And we love you guys. Very much. And we're going to be back on a Monday. Yes. To talk about hopefully football. Peace out. Lots of love. Thanks, Diego, Thanks, for sharing man. your story. We'll no, see you, you soon. You got it, buddy. Peace, peace.